Alright, so, since I'm on a, uh, path of healing and feeling and, uh, going over, uh, traumatic instances and things, I'm going to talk about, uh, some things that go on in hospitals that people don't know about and whether it's because I'm a TI or because I'm just homeless riffraff that nobody cares about I'm not going to make that judgment but I am here where what I'm going to talk about happened also with my friend um, that was also there yo diggity hi everybody hey so you, you were there what Every single day, right? Yes, the uh, end of February of 2016. Um, okay. Yes, I was... Well, why don't I just all do a little... Okay. Yeah, okay, wait. So we just have to keep going straight. Okay, so this is the ER. And so this was the second time with my brain issues since the alleged uh, neuroinvasive West Nile viral encephalitis and other stuff. And so I had pretty much, with my walking and everything gave up on hope at getting help with that um, but when I was here visiting Case I uh, was having you know crap blood and pus and stuff coming out my ears again and my legs kind of quit working again and all that fun stuff so um yeah, I figured, well, I'm never going to make it home at this rate. Fine, I'll go get a frickin' regular antibiotic and just be on my way. So we go to the emergency room, think it's going to be a quickie. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, they actually seem to be really concerned about, you know, my legs not being able to walk and stuff. And I, you know, like, okay, well, whatever. They assured me that they wanted to get to the bottom of that and, hey, we're going to admit you and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, fuck it, whatever. Okay, Let, let's see what what'll happen. I'm not going to park here because I'm afraid and we'll talk about why, but was it in here? Yes, it was. It right was here. Uh, right in this area here. Here so, at Santa Clara at Santa Clara County Valley Medical Center. It's where yep, it's Medi-Cal patients right come in there. here. Medi-Cal. Okay. So, I I'm kind of afraid to go in, but I guess I will. Oh, I'm afraid. Oy. No, I'm not going no, to. No. I, we already got yeah. our sign over on, on Parkmore. Yeah, Park so Park. we'll talk about that in a minute. But I'm going to talk about this uh, not only because of the trauma, but also because people don't know that this happens in hospitals. People, And when I tell people about what actually happened to me, hey, do you want to hold this case since I'm driving? Certainly. Okay. When I tell people what happened to me in the hospital, people are like, oh, Obamacare is so great, they'll take care of you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, dude, let me tell you what's actually happening, you know? And, oh, well, you just didn't try hard enough, or you didn't meet the right people, or, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm not, you know, there must be something wrong with me. I'm not filling out the papers right, or, you know, something. But every... Each two times I was assured, the 10 days in Florida, the 8 days here, I was assured that I would have assistance, I would have help, um, filling out the paperwork. You can put the camera on me if you want. Okay. What are you staring no, at? I didn't want, no, I didn't want to blind you while you that's were driving, because that's one way to get pulled over. Flash is on, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over there and pull over, I think, and we'll just look at the hospital across the way. Okay, so... I let them admit me, just feeling naive and hopeful. I was in so much frickin' pain again. And Casey, you knew, you've known me oh, healthy, it was... you've known me sick, and you've seen me now. Yeah, so, it was pretty gnarly. Um, yeah. No parking any time. Okay. Like ever? Well, okay. <laughs> so... It took me in, I... It was subpar care but I was hopeful okay I'll get some tests and 
blah 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 and actually that was after Washington I was remember I did get approved for insurance and food stamps yes uh, right before this but then I ended up down here so in the hospital um, damn, this is nowhere to park anywhere around here there's a street okay so there, they put me in a room, there's with three other people. So there's four of us in the room. And they come to find out pretty quickly that this is the room where people get put that nobody cares about. Um, fortunately, I had Casey. Um, the other people didn't. Um, and this was weird too because uh, the chick right across from me We'll talk about that. Was um, one of Casey's cousins. So, yeah. anyway, a small world. All right. So, I'm gonna have to smoke. <laughs> Drug me up, all this stuff again. And you know, I did. I ever ask for drugs or tell him I want? You know, I kept telling him I don't want drugs. And oh well, okay. So I have to put the oh, just be a good patient thing, right? How are we supposed to help you if you know? Okay, fine, whatever. So then after, what, eight days, they, uh, I mean, they did do scans and they confirmed, you know, like whatever, RA, stenosis, bone spurs, herniated discs, cysts, stuff like that. Um, did nerve stuff. I can't even really remember everything, but then they're like, uh, oh, well, um, it appears you're uh, out of state and uh, we're going to have to cancel your insurance. Uh, oh no, my insurance people, I canceled because I was out of state, the food stamp and whatever people, and the hospital said they couldn't do anything about it. And then of course they had to kick me out, but don't worry, take all this big bag of drugs, seven or eight drugs I had all written down. And uh, one of them was, like the first one, it says warning, don't take or something uh, may make you do things you don't remember, like driving a car, this and that. Well, this chick I had picked up on the road, she had taken one of those drugs before for her nerve issues and uh, she took her medication drug exactly as prescribed and um, went to bed and then woke up in a jail and I guess with a DUI, whatever, so she doesn't drive. So thank God I had met her and I was already prepped on that. And of course I'm looking up everything as this happens. But uh, so the people in the room, like, I mean, it, it was, I kind of made the best of it case, right? Absolutely. I yeah. mean, so. I demanded, you know, I said, look, everything in this, in this here is anti-healing, no bath, no fresh air, this horrible food, no sunshine. You know, mm -hmm. so like pretty much every day I made them let me walk and stuff like that. The one time, remember, they wanted me to fill something out. I'm like, whatever, dude, you know, this is fucking stupid. If you have to kick, kick me out, whatever, <laughs> you know. And then the chick that was there for like 30 something days at the time, they were completely torturing her, but she had no one. Nobody was there for her and she's not like me. So she just went along with it. 30 something days, not one bath. She went in with this tiny little cut on her toe. Then how many toes had she lost by the time we were there? That was my relative, yeah. And getting worse and yeah. worse and worse, like totally fucking her up. I snuck her outside, so I did give her that and helped her get a little smoke, fresh air and sunshine. But um, yeah, so we were like in this special room that nobody really got assistance or help or anything it was just pretty much like this uh purgatory kind of thing but yeah so then when they're like oh i gotta kick you out the doctor you know i'm just gonna in case i'm gonna let you talk now because yeah that's the best i can do so tell us about the eight days in this hospital here okay well I remember it was towards the end of uh, February, <clears throat> and we were um, in the middle middle part of San Jose, and Christy was really hurting bad and pus out her ear, like she stated before. And then uh, I just like you know what, let's just at least get you checked out, and like she reiterated, 
we're hoping to get in and out and fine i'll take an antibiotic so you leave me alone yeah i mean at least you didn't throw (laughs) something at me you know which is a good thing um anyway um this time anyway (laughs) so she uh we we brought her in and uh they they put her in a room and um you know there's not much more i can add but the i'm gonna add this um she was just so full of anxiety and 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 it wasn't so much about trying to get her well or what the diagnosis was it was just mostly the paperwork wasn't filled right it was you know you're from out of state and it was like you know how was i treated let's be honest you were just you know you were treated you know pretty bad in the sense that you know Except for the few nurses that really loved me because yeah. what I was advocating, but by the doctors and other people, let's be honest, how was I and everyone else in that room treated? Um, everybody was treated like third class shit. Um, you know, the only thing they had to offer you really was a sugary, you know, orange juice or cranberry juice, you know, oceanspray.com. Okay, remember this? All the drugs they gave me caused constipation. Um, They knew I lived in my car. I'm like, can I at least take a shit before I leave the hospital? They wouldn't let me take my own charcoal that I had here in the car. You know, like, let me take a shit in dignity. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it was... It started out hopeful, maybe after a couple days... And then as time went on, I visited Christy every day for at least six hours. You know, even her and I were going at it a little bit because I was, it's just the whole, you know, when she wasn't getting her way, you know, it just, the energy in that place was just not helpful. It wasn't healing in any sense. You know, it got to the point where, you know, let's go have a cigarette and put her in a wheelchair and and um you know just at least get some so idea. that was our good time Those you know our, yeah and, we're, we were like kids sneaking sneaking yeah. out of school or something yeah and i was an expert at cutting and i taught christy how to do it so it was kind of good cutting and what do you mean cutting school cutting school hang out skip funny. school without smoking pot oh. <laughs> and you know but at the end of the day it, it was just uh <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so yeah. the hospital, I mean, you were you there when the doctor was, like, practically yelling at me? Oh, well, I don't make the rules and, like, that stuff. I and... vaguely remember that. Um... And so then I was yeah. trying to get, like, care from anybody like wait you put me on all these drugs you know i live in my car you know it's illegal for me to sleep in my car and it would be completely irresponsible for me to start driving in my car right now yeah and oh no we don't have anything (coughs) for respite care or nothing for reoccurring illnesses or things like that and so I'm like calling everywhere and then there's like dr- they're sending me to like drug rehab but then if I'm not on drugs you know like street drugs then there's nothing for me so fortunately one of my friends got a hotel and whatever I got to sleep the drugs off a little bit before mm-hmm. I got back on the road but okay so it was horrible but let's fast forward to the end so and this also happened in um I guess here this also happened in Florida. I literally, dude, treated like shit, then released, and again, is it because I'm a TI, or is it because I'm just a homeless piece of shit that nobody cares about? But I was chased by cops in two counties after Florida. Now here, ha, this is great. The fun so, part. let the fun begin. So, we come outside, we're loading up the van, this dude walks by, talks to you, Case. Yeah, he was, uh, for lack of a better term, enamored with the... Pretending to be. Yeah, pretending to be uh, enamored with the the artwork that was on her previous van. And, um, you know, and I... You know, you leave a hospital like that, you're just kind of glad to get out of you there. You just want to, yeah. Yeah, you just want to get the, you know, get get on. And and so trying to clean the van out and get rid of what we need to Pack everything it, up. Pack everything, repack everything. You know, I don't play Jenga. She does. Tetris. I'm not good at that. She's good at that. And so, 
Um, I'm trying to bring levity to this to some point. Simon the man, and you're outside. I'm outside, this dude. and this guy is like, oh, wow, that's a really cool-looking van. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, it's hers, thank you. And and he's just kind of, you know, staring us, you know. But acting a little weird, a little sketchy. Odd, sketchy, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, like staring her down more so than me. Like he's confirming I'm the chick that somebody's looking for. Yeah, and it, it was... Uh, hmm. I didn't catch it initially, but, you know, I'm not in tune with that as much as, you know, Christy. But, you know, it, it did feel weird. And then when that was done, um, you know, we went to go park just to kind of relax, just to kind of go through what, what she went through, you know, what I noticed. You know, and then before you know it, we got the um, security people here at Valley Medical... Um, rousing us <clears throat> up, you know, asking questions, wanting before. ID. I mean, we didn't even drive. Yeah, like um, yeah. So first, the security people came, and were the yeah. Then they're like looking at my band. Then they want to see my hospital papers. And oh well, this is you've been here eight days. You know, well yeah. Just look at the papers. I've been here the whole fucking time. Yeah, oh, because the date on my bracelet was, you know, eight days before. Here's, I have to show him the papers, I have to show him, you know, and here I, I'm on drugs, right? I'm on drugs that are technically unsafe and probably illegal, you know, really. So I know they're just, like, harassing me and, you know, been there, done that. Casey was in the back of the car. Nobody knew he was in the back of the van at the time. I guess the people that reported, you know, blah, 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 that's there where she is, whatever. So they probably thought Casey left when we left that spot. So then we start the car, we're getting to go, and then a sheriff comes up. Oh, not so fast. Yeah. And then what, Case? Well, they... Same I'd thing, say, exactly. Yeah, to, you know, ID'd. <sighs> You know, check. Oh, people. well, I'm like, dude, what's going on? Why can't, can't I just go? Like, why, why is it so hard to go home from a hospital here? Oh, well, you know, there's, uh, we just do these routine checks around here because, um, you know, most people are good, but not always. And, you know, there's that small percentage of, you know, trying to like ease me into, you know, whatever. And then, oh, he told me that my license was expired, which it said right on the license, clearly the date. And, you know, he's trying to like claim all these other things that were totally not true. And then, well, who was the third agency? Oh, God. I'm trying to run through I don't this. even think they had, like, a car or a tag or... No. I don't even think... It, it wasn't a cop, and it wasn't hospital security. It was, like, somebody... Who the fuck was uh, it? I, you know, I don't... They, they have... I mean, I'm sure at most hospitals, and I'm just guessing here, they have, you know, there's security, and then there's your sheriffs, and your cops, and then there's protective services. And that... And if... That's what I'm trying to recall. It, it may have been that protective services. <coughs> um, well, the first one, uh, the first harassment was hospital security. The second was sheriff. The third was um, somebody. They had accents, remember? Yeah. But no Mexican accents. Like, and they looked very military. They looked like Russian or Canadian or very. Um, Not of this country. No, 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 no. It felt like we were in a war zone. It was, they weren't like nice, friendly cops. They were, were here to bully, strong arm you, intimidate the fuck out of you. Yeah. So then the third one comes up and, you know, there's still, I don't think it was until the third one when they figured out you were in the car because they're going all around it trying to, all of them. Yeah. At the same time. And, you know, of course, I'm shaking, I'm on drugs, I'm all nervous, I just want to get the fuck out of there. And then finally, what, somebody said, oh, is there somebody in the back here? Yeah. Oh, well, so then what? <laughs> and I think I uh, pulled out my ID and just flashed it on the, the side of the window, proving who I was, and I showed my face. And, uh, um, you know, then I eventually got out of the van. Well, they told me not to get out, and then they told me to get out when they... You know, everything was clear. And, you know, it was, you know, the bizarre thing f was, you know, 
you know, I hear it all the time, no victim, no crime, nothing was going on, all we're trying to do is leave, and it turned into Fallujah. I'm like shaking just thinking about it right now. Yeah, I mean... I really am. Like... <laughs> it, it was, I don't know, I've never been to Fallujah, but I'm just gonna, that's what it seemed like. like they were not... Rousting us for what? Nothing. It was bullshit. Yeah. I, I know for a fact if you were not in the back of the van, nobody would have seen or heard from me again. Just the same thing that happened in Florida. And the only reason I got out in Florida was because Lewis, who saved me there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, he saved my ass. Like, people disappear there, yeah, for their $1,500 a day federal funds with their own police force. So who are yeah. these people? Do they always chase homeless people out of the hospital? Or is it just a TI thing? Am I just special? Is that why they try to keep me in hospitals against my will and give me all these drugs I don't want? What, what... What's going on? Yeah, and, and the sad part is we're probably not going to get an answer to that. And, you know, but it, it's weird. I hadn't really thought about it, that experience that night. Um, a handful of times I've come back to this hospital. Um, Dude, I'm still, I'm shaking, man. I'm still just thinking about it. Like, I was fucking terrified and drove all the way to freaking uh, Tahoe after that. Yeah. Well, yeah, after the hotel after the and hotel, rested yeah. and stuff, but I was scared to death. I knew I couldn't go home because everybody was looking for me. Yeah, like Whoever, you're... stupid stalker bullshit people, yeah, you know, your, stupid your, stories. Your walker. And, you know, How many people uh, get chased by cops every time they get released from hospitals? I don't know. I've. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that? No. No, I was, did you see them help me with uh, also? What, did you see them help me with the paperwork or financial aid or anything else like that? Or like in the hospital? Did anyone offer to help with any of that? Or were they just like, go, what, go, you got to go now? Well, at the risk of my privilege, yeah. Or just you know, I've seen uh, other colors get treated a lot better and that's fine that works for them what happened but, to your you know, cousin man they fucked her up yeah. bad the only reason yeah, yeah. that i got out alive was because i was very vocal and there were some nurses on my side and they were in tears when they were going to kick me or when they kicked me out yeah 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 it's um you know it's it's certainly a a county a state whatever you want to call this piece of land of, of mass mental illness and you know I'm always of the opinion I learned this in the movie Patch Adams you know what's the what do butchers and doctors have in common they both wear white coats so we're in Santa Clara California and San the first Jose, but Santa Clara San County. Jose Santa, Santa Clara, Clara County, County Santa yeah. Clara Valley Medical Hospital it's mm -hmm. called yes so when this happened to me in Florida, it was, what, Oak Hill Hospital in Brooksville, like, totally across the country, and the same thing, the only difference was they grabbed me by the head and threw me down and took me away. If Lewis was not there, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so why do some people, do you think, get abused by the system like that? And, I mean, you saw it with your own eyes. So, yeah. like, all the, you know, naysayers or other people that have good system experiences. Oh, they gave me my money. Blah, blah. That doesn't yeah. happen for all of us. So, yeah. is it because I'm homeless or the TI thing? Or what do you think? Well, you're special. Hmm. And... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think there's that, I think that in this particular case, that trumps everything. Now, I'm not special. <coughs> so, um, I don't know, I just go back to the fact <coughs> that... What do you I'm mean by special? Spe well, I haven't, I'm not under special, you know, being watched, surveillance, whatever it is, not since Arizona. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I don't know, it just seemed bizarre. I mean, I've I've seen... Uh, law enforcement types, you know, do some chicanery stuff. I've seen some stuff, but not to the level of, say, you. Wow, and, and, really? Uh, that was the craziest you've seen? Yeah, I mean, it was bizarre in the sense that it, 
you know, it was like dropping a piece of gum on the ground and, you know, SWAT coming. Okay, am I exaggerating? Fine. but Not but that's, really. But, that's but, pretty much what happened. That's kind of how I felt after it, you know. And, uh, we were there, what, an extra hour, hour and a half, something so. like that, shaken, so. being fucking totally yeah. strong-armed. can't remember all the details right now, because it yeah. was February, the very end of, like, February 28th of uh, Actually, 2016. Oh, check this out. Yeah. Remember when we called him the next day? I'm like, dude, that was weird. Let's, let's just call the police and see oh, if that's yeah, yeah, typical. Yeah. So I called him up, and I'm like... Hey, I'm new in town, and I was just released from the, or I'm I'm just passing through, but I have a, had a brain injury and ended up in the hospital. Uh, Son, oh great, how was your stay? Ah, la 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 la. Did they treat you well? Well, yeah, everything was great until I tried to leave, and we were harassed by three different law enforcement. Oh no no no, that would never happen. Oh no, yes it did. Let me tell you. They said that it was routine, that they always go around and check everyone just to make sure. They ran warrants, they checked all my documents, my... Ho no, no, no. Yes, I swear, that happened. It felt like we were in Nazi Germany. Oh, bullshit. My grandmother was in Nazi Germany. Don't you... E like, he literally started scolding me, yelling at me, like... From America. Like, like, what? <laughs> Did they know that I was calling, or were they expecting uh, my call? Like, th Casey, be honest uh, about yeah, that call. No, that it, was weird. It, it was. It, it's straight to the T. Um, your your recall of that is much better than mine. I think, coupled with the fact, in my case, um, the Super Bowl was played here. It was the Broncos and the uh, Panthers played here in Santa Clara, where the Niners play, and I had been in the hospital here from February second to February twelfth. And then, you know, I get a little two-week break, and then Christy comes in. So, you know, dealing with this, I was sort of kind of traumatized, like, oh, God, I'm back here again, you know. What? And they didn't treat you all that well either, and I don't know if it was the homeless mm. thing for you, but they didn't send um, cops, and they didn't treat well, you as bad as they did us. Uh, no, no. But they sent you home when you had a pneumonia and broken um, ribs and shit like that, and then... Yeah, that was the time, that was the end of January. They were completely negligent, yeah, which is why was, you came back with sepsis, sepsis, what, a week later? Yeah, sepsis. In February. Yeah, you can't, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, sepsis and pneumonia in my right lung. Did they put you in a special homeless room like they did for me? Um, the first night, it was the worst. It got prog you know, I'll be honest in my case okay i had the sepsis i called i called the ambulance on myself in santa clara and they ambulanced me here and uh i, w I waited in the waiting room I, th I believe 12 hours and i'm just in super massive pain feel like i'm drowning in my own fluid in my right lung i'd hate to think if it was my left lung and both and um after th the first night there I there were literally 16 doctors in the room and I'm like motherfuckers you either fucking help me or just you know I mean I, I was insane I, I lost lost it and so they put gave me a sedative I kind of slept put me in another room and then they did the treatment and in fairness to the treatment um it was a nine day Nine, ten, I was there ten days, nine, uh, nine, uh, nine of those days they were cleaning my lung out. And as time progressed, it got better and better and better. I'm grateful for the fact I'm alive. I'm of the belief. But they shouldn't have sent you home the first time. Um, yeah, the time before that at the end of January. Yeah. So were they, yeah. did they put you in a special homeless fuck you up room like they had me in? Um... No, nah, not so. How many people were in your room? Well, see, that's the thing. When I went in for the rib thing, I left that. They let me go that day. Mm -hmm. I've never spent a night in the hospital except for a sleep test because I have sleep apnea, and that was eons ago. But I've never slept a night in a hospital until the until sepsis. The sepsis came, and that was ten days from the. Second but they day. sent you home, and when... then they sent me home, and I. It took me, you know, a few more days to just come back to whatever normal is for me <laughs> i just remembered something else yeah. remember when we were in the waiting room for me 
before I even saw triage, let alone a doctor, what were they offering me? I honestly don't remember. Fucking painkillers. Oh, okay, okay. Don't you remember that? Um, I'm like, what? I might have missed that one. That's when what's his name was there. Well, you were here too. Oh, you might have been outside. I might have, yeah. But yeah, they were offering me, I, I, I don't know, whatever, painkillers before I even went to triage <coughs> or before I even saw a doctor, which maybe I shouldn't be advertising that for like pill popping junkies and stuff, but seriously, dude. We're here to help everybody. They, like, really? No, I don't want drugs. I am here just because of the shit, you know, my brain, well, you can't walk. Well, I know I can't walk, but it's just the way it is. I already gave up because I'm not allowed. I'm not, I can't afford, you know, to actually get to the bottom of what's going on. I mean, we know a lot of things and I won't go under the knife for it. And I've, if you watch my videos, you know how and why I don't go through the medical system, but, yeah. you know, dude, we talked about some of my other things, like colonoscopies on those crazy tables, mm -hmm. shit, 19 years old, like, I've really been traumatized yeah. by the medical system, and I'm talking coast to coast and everywhere, it's just, and I'm glad, I'm glad you haven't been traumatized in this way, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't speak out that other people are. Okay, and we should not be dismissed. And when we beg for help, it's because we really actually need it. It's not because we're stupid. It's not because we don't know how to fill out paperwork or because we don't, you know, yeah. you're just not trying hard enough. Yeah. I mean, give me a break. Okay, Casey, let's talk. You have uh, brain issues you've had for how long? Let's wow. get real here. Yeah, baby. Oh, let's keep it real. Okay. So, 14 years, something like that. Uh, sometime in 2002, I sustained a concussion, and I didn't get it treated. Somewhere in between... Sometime in 2002, I went to sleep. Um, I was. This is here in San Jose, and I slept on my right side. I, I can never sleep on this side ever again because I'm too afraid of it happening again while well, my brain is pop there was a pop in my head and the most intense migraine or whatever it is from here at the time I thought it was a stroke but then I thought about it wait a minute my <coughs> limbs didn't go numb so I believe it was I popped an aneurysm and um, I haven't been the same since I still feel this pressure in my head constantly um, the okay, so let's fast forward. Sure. We, um, so you've been going through that for a long time. Since 2002. And when you came to California, and let's admit, part of it was you were told the best neurologist here in San Jose, it's a good opportunity to go back and get good medical treatment, blah, blah, blah. So let's be honest. How long after you got to California and in this medical system did it take for you to actually see a doctor about your brain issue? Oh, well, you got to go through the hmm. um, primary care, my doctor's doctor. How long Chandra. did it take? I would say it took, a, when I first got it back into the Valley Medical System, September of 2015, I believe I finally saw a neurologist that December. Um, so about three months because... But then what happened? He Didn't you just get another I, referral? I, and... I kept getting, you know... I'd almost have to relook at all the paperwork that I have seen. You got nowhere. And I, and I got no I got nowhere and You, you know, still haven't. Here I we mean, are three years later. Yeah, I mean Do you have any more answers about your brain? No, because No. And you've recent, you've been homeless? Well yeah, um, yeah mm -hmm. but thank God Because of all this. Yeah, I mean no I, help with the system I, except I, your food stamps and uh, Yeah. Two hundred dollar general whatever. Yeah, but Currently, right now, I'm in a way better situation. Well, now you are, so, now, yeah. for the last couple months, but... But it was... Uh, brain injury, brain three years, or all these years trying to get help, then you're here with the best neurologist, blah, 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 well, nothing, bottom, still you just, haven't got help. Bottom line, let me just bottom line it, you know, it's Medi-Cal, okay, and... You know, unless you're about something and you've got money that they can extract from you from the Obamacare system, and at the end of the fucking day, it's not health care, it's a tax. Yep. 
because if you got the IRS involved in that, where do you get off saying it's a fucking health care when you get taxed at the end of, in, you know, to Uncle Sam? And they, if you don't pay it, you pay a $1,000 fine. Well, who fucking wants that kind of insurance? Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, especially with our minimum wage jobs. Yeah. So, Casey, check this out. Yeah. There's people... Well, I remember when I had regular insurance, mm. you know, and my mom's insurance, I was treated way, way better. Yeah. Well, now we know people... Like, the same person that they had insurance through their job, and then they didn't. They had Medi-Cal or care or whatever. The exact same issue, the exact same hospital, two totally different methods of treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's important to discuss this, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, all this... American healthcare system so good. No, it's not. Casey has been here three years in California, still in the San Jose, was homeless most of it up until two months ago, two years, whatever. I thought you said, okay, two. All right. Still, and homeless with health issues that he could never get help from. And this is the reality. I've done the other videos with uh, our friend, Pele Butt Walker, we'll call her. Um, you know, same thing, and it doesn't matter where you are. And so when, here's the reality, when you get sick, and you can't work, and then you have to fight the system for years and years, and you get your under $200 food stamp, and then maybe, if you're lucky, in states where they have it, $200 general abil disability yeah. assistance, yeah. how does that pay bills? How does that pay for your registration in your car, gas in your car, toilet paper, showers, laundry, like it doesn't. And that's why people are going homeless because of health. Guess what? I've had no credit in my life. I'm going on. We just wanted to talk about the hospital and I'm going off on this <laughs> tangent, but fuck it. I have like a half a million dollars in medical bills. I'll never be able to have like normal things like a normal person, you know, buy home. And that's cool because, you know, fuck the system because this is what they do. Yeah. But, yeah. Bottom like, line, it comes down to Wall Street. The bo I heard it best said the other night by Catherine Austin Fitz. You know, we can hate each other all like, all we want, but I'd much, rather hate, uh, I'd much rather hate you while we all at least can go, you know, have decent insurance and, and, and do things and have some fun, you know, with the extra money that you get. But at the end of the day, you know, Wall Street, bankers, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'll quote the great General, Gerald Salente. This is what runs our country. Princeton, Harvard, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. And we got more time, we got more money invested in war and this and that when we can't help our own people. So at the end Go of the Casey. day, so at the end of the fucking day, <laughs> you know, this is, you know, this is not the America I was told it was. It's not even anywhere close. I would, you know, when it, when people say you live in the greatest country in the world, on some level I do. I, you know, at least I'm not in Africa, in South Africa. <laughs> we know how, who gets treated bad there. And, same as here. And, um. Same as here. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, mm. you, you, you know, the system you fight, it, it, it just matters as who's, you know, running the money system. And that's really the bottom line. Same, I've heard it on, you know, I, I will, another quote I will basically say on a, from a show mm -hmm. when you interviewed Beverly Eekman. 95% of these fucking groups, Black Lives Matter, fucking, um, you know, the, the KKK, they're 95% of the groups are already infiltrated and, and being run um, by elements of our the exact same people you exact, think you're fighting against yeah exactly that they're you know they're already being run and if you happen to come up with a new group i'll give it a month or two before they'll send some motherfucker in there to fuck destroy shit. them all just like fuck jim shit. stack did with how many groups yeah. Yeah. arm freedom i mean that's what they do and then they blame some Homeless white chick, homeless disabled white chick who heals yeah. people for free all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. How hilarious is that? And I'll, you know, let's go to Las Vegas. Hey, Casey, another thing. Like, uh, so I asked my brother when, you know, after my mom died, I'm like, come on, dude, seriously, you're going to tell me you had no idea that I almost died and left for dead and on this. 
Oh no, that mom said that was all fake. You were oh you're yawning and I'm zooming in. <laughs> Sorry. That was all fake and and I'm just doing that for ratings. So why don't you tell people about my uh fake uh, disabilities and see her there. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I guess, I guess by that, you know, we're all <coughs> disabled on some level or another. I mean, I'll freely admit that with me. But, um, yeah, no, your brother... Fake. Was I faking it when oh, I couldn't walk? Fuck no. I was mean, I <laughs> was I faking it when I couldn't form coherent sentences? <laughs> yeah, that, that, did I did I mm, fake the shit dripping out of my head? No, like. <laughs> I, there was me and two other people that saw it, <coughs> so I know that. Well, just that. that one day, but yeah. So what do you have to say to, well, people like my dead mother and stuff that would um, oh. s make claims that that was fake? Well, if people are going to, you know, if your own bottom line, I'm going to answer your question. You know what, in your case that I've seen with my own two eyes and I think I've seen you eight different times in the eight years I've known you maybe more I don't know the number anymore I lost count at least you were there but, in Shasta too let's yeah, not forget yeah, that yeah. you've seen stalker shit uh, yeah first hand I, I definitely have and um we'll go to that on another video but the bottom line is you know the question is this um you know you're not faking this shit this shit is real Oh, and I, I'm and, faking homelessness. Uh, well, <laughs> you do have a nice home. I mean, you know, you do have flowers and an ashtray and, and, a, and then other great accoutrements that are... Look at that really beautiful great. gift I got. I'll show you later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's, it's a messed up system. And for me, I'm working in the homeless shelter system. Ooh, I want to ask you this, Casey. Go ahead. Okay, so before I was homeless, mm -hmm. how many friends did I have? <laughs> oh, God. Well, um, pretending to be, you know, a well, lot. A, a lot. I, I Okay, what happened after my brain blew up and I became homeless? What did you watch? Um, people falling out by the wayside, ostracized, you know, another version of being ostracized and... Um, you know, the people that, I, I mean, I think you, I may be wrong, I can only think of, other than me and maybe somebody else in the Midwest, um, that has tried to be there for you as best they could, even though I'm dealing with my stuff, you know, we're doing the best we can. So even people yeah. that I had, like, helped and stuff, when I became homeless, they, they forgot. I yeah. was just all of a sudden, uh, you know, incapable of, of everything. Yeah, you got, it, it got... You know, the bottom Everybody line. fucking attacked Pe me. People are twisting shit, and that's... At the end of the day, that's on them, and the sad part is we can only control what we can control. And, you know, that's kind of how I live by. It's not perfect. How were you treated when you went homeless by your friends? How many stuck by you? Well, okay, I mean, my perception is this. Um... There are friends that looked out for me and did help me. I have not had to spend one night out in the street. And I'm I'm good with that because in my case, if I'm out in the street, I'm dead. Like it or not, I'm dead. And, I've and nobody cares. Uh, like I nobody cared nobody. when they threw me out on the street. For you, in your case, well, it's no a lot one in the system. I mean, yeah. in the system, because everybody thinks, oh, that could never happen. Well, yeah, you know, I, I, nobody cares. I've been blessed. I've been blessed. But the system would let you die on the streets, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you and know, your, for me, your I, family, I had to. They'd let you die on the streets, no uh, I guess problem. if you get right down to it, you know, they can only yeah. help so much. And, you know, I'm not going to waste my time worrying about it because I, mm -hmm. what I did was this. It's sad, though, it, huh? It's what sad, happens? but I can't, I can only get sad when I'm alone with it. But, you know, the bottom line is I picked myself up, my bootstraps, dealing with what I had to deal with. I didn't have to spend one night out in the street, and I'm grateful. And now yes. my life is a little bit better. 
We did it. And, you know, yeah. and I'm, you know what? And don't tell anyone what you're doing, but we'll just say you have a job I'm and a cool. home. I, and I got, yeah, I mean, if people in San Jose really knew the gig I had, I'm actually considering I'm living in the top three most expensive places in the fucking country. I'm doing pretty good by the standards of I got a roof over my head and Fat I, get to cash. Help, I get to help people, you know, just on some level. And, you know, my self-esteem is getting a little bit better. But, you know, after what I went through for the past five years, especially the last five years in Arizona and, you know, you think a it'll ever get year. better for me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it can on, you know, but for me, I'm in the system. I got to put one. F I know what's going on, but I still got to put one foot in it because I don't want to die. That's just how I look at it. And we're both doing it in a different way. Um, and that's okay. I mean, I wish I could do more. If I had more, she wouldn't be in the situation she's in. But I got I can't take, if I can't take care of me, I can't take care of you. Mm -hmm. There's no getting around that. You're and, doing it. And, you know. Yay. I'm not, I got no time for bitching and pissing and moaning although I still will do it but I'm healing myself that's all you're I can doing do. good case you know it's well and this because it's like 46 minutes already cool. yeah anything else you want to say about Santa Clara since we got off on a tangent Santa Clara County Santa Clara Medical well, Valley, Med, Valley Med whatever well they saved me from dying of sepsis and pneumonia <laughs> after they after caused it, all, it. I mean, I remember, <laughs> after they caused it. You know, I, 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 well, I don't know how I got the sepsis. After they neglected you the they first time, the first night, yeah, uh -huh. the first night, and then the yeah, you know, kick you to the out. curb. But you know what? Sometimes you got to go through a lot of freaking hell to have your own version of heaven. And, uh, well, you're I'm still here and you I'm still haven't gotten help with the neurology. They just want to send everyone to yeah, mental health. So, like, what's up with that? Well, you still haven't gotten doctor um, care. No. Well, I'm kind of self-care because most of my issues are this. You know, anxiety is, for me, and mental health is physical. It start, For me, it starts physical. If I got pain, it turns into mental. I've been dealing with it for a long time. Have I done it right? Not all the time. Have I done it good? Not all the time. But I'm still here. I'm not gonna. You know what? I'm not gonna sweat the shit. But, you know, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm doing today. That's all I'm allowed to do. Anything a, else you want to share? I got a 24-hour day, and I'm just gonna deal with today. I got to stay as present as I can, and try not to let anybody fuck up my, you know, program. Yay! All right. So fuck Santa Clara Valley Med. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, seriously, they abused the fuck out of me, and I know that that law stuff was a total setup, and, um, yeah, hey, has anyone else had experiences like that at the hospital, of all the thousands of people that come here every day, how <coughs> many are harassed like that? I'd like to know, and I am so thankful you were in the car, dude, because yeah. I know that would have been, and in the, oh, man... I got gotcha. you. Close calls everywhere, but yeah, we need to get the hell out of here. Yeah, because those doctors were ruthless. That yeah. bitch, that chick, she was just like straight up, like mean and like purposefully, I think, hurtful. And, and the sad part is they're just as programmed too. They're getting yep. payoffs, you know, yep. to play the game, you know. Yeah. Butchers. And doctors, same white coats. All right, yeah, same white coats. We've rambled a lot. Okay, cool. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>